Hey guys, it's Sniff, and this is my first kind of look at Extraction. Uh, this is all of the information that I've been able to gather about Extraction and the game company behind it. If you're like me, and when you saw Nexon's Three Reasons We Love Extraction, you were a little uh, skeptical of, yeah, I, I, bet, uh, I bet those are the exact reasons why you love Extraction and not just you know, the wonderful monies that are going to come in, right? So... I decided I would look into those three reasons and see what is the good and what is the bad and what is the fugly. So, first thing on the agenda is, it was developed by Splash Damage, the guys who made Wolfenstein, Enemy Territory, Brink, Enemy Territory, Quake Wars, and a bunch of multiplayer maps for Doom 3. If you're like me... I haven't heard of many of these games. I, in fact, up until this point, I heard none of those games except for, like, Doom 3. But that's just because I knew the Doom franchise. So, what are these games and how good were they? We're going to start off with Wolfenstein Enemy Territory. And it is definitely one of the most renowned of the bunch. Um, the actually free game. Completely free. I haven't been able to find any paid content for it whatsoever. It's a very good FPS. It's uh, very balanced, and people just enjoyed playing it. I, I've ne I haven't seen any real negative anything's uh, review-wise, or if anyone said anything bad about it. I it's it's to a point where it's even open source for the community ma to make mods for the game. The second one is Quake Wars, and this is an, also an enemy territory mod, just to look like Quake. Uh, and if you've ever heard of Quake Wars, then I very well uh, commend you on that. I've never heard of the game, and everyone that I've talked to has never heard of it. Oddly enough, though, it was the number one selling PC game in the U.S. in 2007, also in the U.K. in 2007. The only real bad thing that I could find about it was the console port was uh, heavily criticized because they had to lower the graphics to make it so that it would uh, be compatible with the systems. Other than that, I mean, there's no DLC for either Wolfenstein or Quake Wars. I couldn't find anything, and they've just been good games. Um, that's what I've heard from them. Third one is Doom 3 maps. Uh, they didn't really make Doom 3. They were employed to actually make maps for the develop uh, for Doom 3. However, Doom 3 was kind of a absolute failure. Uh, the game just wasn't fun, apparently, and the multiplayer was even more bleh. So, uh, the general consensus was Doom 3 sucked eggs. Um, Arkham's origin multiplayer uh, thing. It, it, the multiplayer part, essentially. And Arkham's... Origins has gotten okay reviews. It's a Batman game and it's not really FPS. Splash Damage only worked on the multiplayer aspect of the game and from what I can tell, it's okay. Uh, it's a weird concept where you're between Bane's jo and Joker's minions fighting Batman and everyone is like a minion or is batman and bane and joker will randomly come into the game it's it's kind of weird i don't understand it personally and it doesn't really look like my uh cup of tea but it does look well polished brink um this one actually is the most important game of the bunch before i get to that uh i have to tell you a little bit about the game itself it's gotten some really mixed reviews uh, that's because it had some really weird game design choices, and I'm not sure why they went ahead with this. I guess they just really didn't like uh, single-player campaigns. Splash Damage does seem to have a trend where it only works on multiplayer portions of games, or uh, exclusively multiplayer games. Um, there's really weird design choices such as how you unlock weapons. You unlock them via completing challenges or achievements. Uh, there's no single player campaign whatsoever. You can just play multiplayer maps with bots. Uh, in addition, there are no dedicated servers to run the games, which I found kind of weird uh, for a nearly exclusive multiplayer game company to not host uh, dedicated servers. 
And what's even worse is uh, there was a bug, and still is a bug apparently, that prevents people from hosting games altogether. Uh, you, that, that, that's a pretty significant bug, especially if you're not running any dedicated servers. Um, and it made it a really difficult game for people to like, and just a large portion of the community got frustrated with the game. Um, that being said, on the flip side, where Splash Damage like really did things right, they definitely did things right. The multiplayer mode, if you're able to play it, is very balanced, even with DLC weapons, and there's a really big selection of guns to uh, use as well. Brink is pretty heavy on having teamwork to win, and uh, only having objective-based maps and game modes. Uh, for instance, there's no elimination or OMA game modes, and if you do not push with the team, or if you do not um, play with the team, you're definitely not going to win, and you can't do any lone wolf kind of tactics, uh, just because it is that heavily team-reliant. So, why is this important? Well, looking at the posts on the videos showing gameplay of Extraction and Facebook posts on the game, players liken Extraction to Brink 2. Um, or not liken it as, but it is a Brink 2. Um, that means that you can look a lot into Brink and kind of guess what's going on with Extraction, which I've, I've definitely seen a lot of the similarities of what they've posted about uh, Extraction. For instance, the class system seems to be uh, the same. Um, there are five classes in Brink, just like there are in Extraction. The guns are relatively similar, it seems. Um, or at least, the um, yeah, the, the guns are essentially relatively similar. As well as uh, just how the game acts and plays, and the low recoil, low spread. Next thing that uh, Comet Arms was all gung-ho about was Echo! What is Echo? Um, and the balance. We're so balanced this game. So, looking at basically every piece of media that uh, Splash Damage puts out, there's a large emphasis on game balance and it not being pay to win. And not only that, they talk extensively about their Echo system, and uh, if you're familiar with heat maps, uh, that's essentially what it is. If you're not familiar with heat maps, a uh, heat map is basically taking a 2D model of the map and collecting data points of like deaths, what guns were used to kill people, and where. Uh, the pathways people uh, like walk down, or what's the most popular way people move through the map, uh, and that's really good information to have for a uh, for map balance. You know, if someone has a really strong position that just makes it completely unfair for an attacking or defending team, then that needs to be removed or that needs to be balanced with uh, just an equally powerful spot on the opposite side. Um, there are a lot of games that use heat maps. All of the Halo games past Halo 3 use heat maps. The COD series uses heat maps. Counter-Strike Go, they all use heat maps in their uh, map development. And I'm happy to see that this gaming company is too, and that they're advertising that they are. That makes me happy. Um, hopefully, Combat Arms gets a hint and can implement something like that, because, I mean, it's needed. <laughs> their maps are silly. So, in this area, I'm satisfied with them advertising ballots. However, um, in all of the gameplay that they've released, eh, there doesn't seem to be a huge selection of guns to use. I understand that there won't be a lot of weapon selection in Alpha, um, and I hope that I, I hope they improve it. I, I hope they add more guns because I like Combat Arms' weapon hoarding, mix and match between everything type system. Um, what they do advertise is having quote. Dozens of different mercenaries you can play with, uh, with their own styles and abilities. Uh, does this mean each merc has their own gun types and, that they use? Is it that they exclusively have their own like abilities, like ability to build a sentry? I really don't know. It's it's not explained anywhere, not clearly, anyways. And uh, because of that lack of information on how the merc system and the gun system works. I'm kind of worried on how they intend to balance it, especially if they're starting with a small gun selection. Um, I'm worried that they might just, okay, we have these base guns, and then immediately just give advantages to the paid. 
Um, I really hope that's not the case, but I wouldn't be surprised if Nexon somehow uh, coaxed them into doing something silly like that. And the third thing that Nexon says they love is the graphics are gorgeous. And this, to a point, I have to agree. For a free-to-play game, the graphics are amazing. Um, the environment is stunning. I, I love how the environment looks. Uh, it doesn't look too cluttered, and the uh, the maps don't look very, uh, linear at all. The character models don't look amazing and or like something spectacularly incredible, but I definitely don't have anything to uh, be angry about or say that I don't like it. Um, it's definitely an improvement over the combat arms modeling. Uh, definitely a lot prettier. The character models aren't necessarily anything to write home about, but I don't really see anything negative about them either. They're pretty okay. The effects like explosions and bullet tracers, environmental effects, uh, like ricochets and sparks flying, they're all really satisfying to look at. The explosions, they definitely, uh, they definitely look good, and the bullet tracers, they, they're just all fine. Um, they're... They're eye candy. It's really nice eye candy. The only thing that I've really seen that needs work are the gun animations and the gun models. Now, I'm not looking for anything super fancy, awesome, spectacular, but they just seem a little mediocre. They seem a little too, uh, I don't know, too mundane. It doesn't look like they have a lot of, uh, it doesn't look like they have a lot of life to them. They just look like normal guns. Which, you know, I'm okay with, but it looks a little lackluster comparatively to the rest of the semi-futuristic environment. Uh, how everything looks kind of sleek and shiny. So, um, although they are a major upgrade over combat arms, they, they kind of leave a little bit to be uh, desired. Finally, what's my thought about all of this? You know, going over these three things, am I happy with what Nexon is putting out, what Nexon is advertising, and if Splash Damage is going to be a company that uh, that keeps to its word? If they're able to polish the game and learn from the mistakes from Brink, then I think Extraction has a lot of potential to be a good game. Uh, the company, though it's kind of had some slip-ups, especially with like Doom 3 and uh, Brink, I think that they've proven that they're not money-hungry and that they're willing to uh, make a good FPS. You know, it's, uh, I mean, even with the DLC that they produced for uh, Brink, they let the players try it for free for a week before they put it on sale. I think that's a great character in a company. Um, and I'm remaining optimistic that they'll keep their promise of not making Extraction pay to win, and I'm excited to play it. Uh, something after the fact that I just kind of noticed, they do have uh, a deathmatch style uh, game mode in Brink, which was something I was kind of, uh, not Brink, um, Extraction, which I was kind of worried about because Brink didn't have that, uh, all they had was very objective-oriented games, so I'm happy to see that they're making it a little bit wider of a base for all uh, all free uh, first-person shooter players. So, that's my opinions, that's what I've dug up about the company and what Nixon's kind of advertised about the game, and uh, I hope you like this. Uh, there's a sniff.